Buzz Raptor Jesus here, and we're back with our first campaign map. Uh, I'm using a, a random method to actually uh, fill out these hexes from the 1E AD&D DMG, which is a percentile system. Essentially, a lot of the, the space will be empty on your map. You know, and some of it will be full of ruins, and a very small portion of it will be full of settlements. According to this table, <laughs> anyway... But you know how dice are, they're pretty fickle. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. So far I've gotten some ruins up in the northern part, so I wonder what kind of shenanigans the players can get up to in there. some rough going because there's no passes or anything up in these spots. So in addition to all these kinds of ruins and places that you're putting on your map, you want to have some uh, like monster layers that, you, that you've already determined and you've already mapped out and you've already filled full of things, but you haven't put on your map. And you want a handful of these, uh, every uh, at least at, in your arsenal as you're playing the game, so when some sort of random encounter shows up when they're doing wilderness adventure, which shouldn't really be done until they're higher level. But then when you you do do this, you'll have uh, these handful of uh, layers that you can just like put, plop down right on the map and you already have a map for it and everything. Uh, it's just handy to have those like in your back pocket as it were. Yeah, I'm going down each row. That's why I put on the numbered uh, hexes for, for this particular tutorial. Otherwise, you get lost in the weeds real quick, my friends. <laughs> and I'm just rolling for each hex and see if it's uh, got dwellings in it or villages or castles. Which castles could also be potential adventure spots as well because not all castles are manned by friendly people as it were. And sometimes your castle might just be full of a, a high level uh, lord that just wants to duel before his last days are numbered, you know. <laughs> might be full of evil clerics which then that's always fun fighting cults is always a good fun time when you're an adventurer don't you think <laughs> and you can use any method I'm just using a random method because uh, it's it's quick and I don't really have to like put too much of my brain power towards it yeah I tried to name these like medium castle and stuff but it was just like too hunk and big on the map which is also good to use numbered hexes like this because then you can have a key on your in your notebook or something what each hex is supposed to have in it. and i'm using a slightly smaller hex map than maybe you usually it's like uh four hexes to the inch but i'm using like one hex is an inch for this particular one. It is kind of hard to find some hex paper. I did buy some, but it's not a... You need like a... If you're going to buy some hex paper pads, you need ones that are spiral bound because it will not lay flat. 
you have no idea how freaking annoying it is when you're trying to draw things and your book closes on you. And that's kind of the situation I'm dealing with the next pad I got. <laughs> so I'll probably just give it to the players because who cares if they're frustrated. <laughs> List of icons here to find something suitable. Yeah, so the table goes single dwelling, four, hamlet, village, town, and city, castles, ruins, and then empty is what you're usually doing. Empty is like 17 to 100 percent. So most of your hexes should be. This is what I'm using for the, the hamlet icon. So a little hamlet right outside the castle. Which I didn't really do a how to build your first castle video because I felt like a lot of the stuff in the settlement video also worked well with your first castle. You'll just want to make things bigger and grander in your first castle. Because this should be like the big castle. So there is a ca another castle on that map that I rolled up so it would be interesting to find out who this, who this uh, owner is idea for this castle on the far right is a somewhat eleven lord. <laughs> Someone that could potentially help the party. So you know, each of these settlements are going to have their own factions and power struggles too. Which just makes things interesting once your players start getting a higher level. Interesting, I kept getting these uh, little villa hamlets and thorps and stuff surrounding the castle because that's kind of how like the big cities start to develop. But each of these hikes are supposed to be six miles apart, so but the, it also makes sense. It's just funny how the random rolls make this very organic uh, map because now there's a on the other end, there's a castle and a city. It's almost maybe a opposing trade points or something. I don't know, it worked out well right where I put my road, I guess. The dice tell their own story as well as you. <laughs> it's kind of good that the dice rolled the way they did because now there's reasons for the players to go to opposite ends of the map instead of just down where all the fun and adventure is. <clears throat> you know, lots of settlements start popping up around this castle just for protection, I guess. Almost halfway done with this little bad boy. like some more dwellings are popping up near this like kind of civilized east. <laughs> yeah, I'm using these kind of tent looking structures for single dwellings. Which, you know, it's just like a family out there trying to survive up the woods, which must be hell I'm telling you these all these monsters roaming around. Oh no. Especially it's a looks like a forested mountain hex. That's got to be some horrible beasties out there. They must be some tough folk. Probably some lumberjacks out there. Kind of fellows that scoff at your peasley adventures and uh, fighting goblins. <laughs> castle right outside the bigger castle. The 
West is starting to look like a kind of a military strong point. Or maybe it's two opposing wards. Which would be kind of funny. Maybe they fight over this sword. Single dwelling out there. <laughs> city right on the moor. Why not? There's even a subtable to determine what the population are is of the castles and various cities and stuff. Because these castles could actually be inhabited by monsters or empty. Another good spot for dungeons. Or for players to take over, you know, like this uh, castle in the, the west there, it might actually be empty and right outside some ruins, it looks like. But whenever there is a city or a dwelling or a village, there's actually like a population. right outside these ruins. They might go there and raid that place, an you know, old battle site or something. This could make sense because of the castle. So you start to develop a story as you start rolling up these things. The tables aren't really, you shouldn't use them as a hard and fast result. I am just for the heck of it, just to see what happens. But you can change it how uh, to fit your campaign. Because you already start developing like how you want things to happen. But so far I haven't really had too much of a problem with the things that have popped up. You know, the south is looking a bit populous. It might be why the dungeon is such a big deal. I'm trying to make a road down do that southern part to get all that trade. Almost on the last line now. Hopefully guys you find this kind of stuff useful. I know it's kind of silly. Uh, I always feel silly trying to tell people in an authoritarian way how to play and have fun in, in elf games, but I just thought I'd share a little bit of my wisdom and try not to be so like, this is how you must do things. Because really you'll just find your own way of like doing things and altering things in order to fit your style and your player's style. But hopefully some of my advice is at least useful to start filling out. My south's looking real populated down here, fellas. Alright, I guess that's the rest of the Alright, I guess that's the rest of the video, fellas. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I hope you like my video. If you want to see more of this stuff, please uh, subscribe. I hope you guys uh, have a good game next time you play and keep your shield arm strong, alright?